The title of today's reflection, Does Eternal Life Hurt? Our reading for today is from the Gospel of St. John, John chapter 17, starting verse 1. When Jesus had said this, he raised his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that he may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them, and they accepted them, and understood that I came from you, and that they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them, and now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be just as we are. In Acts chapter 1, we see something interesting. Jesus is carried up into the heavens, leaving the disciples looking up. Angels appear, asking Jesus' followers, why are you looking up into the heavens? When people of faith are ga gazing into the heavens, the voices of angels can be heard asking, why are you standing here looking up into the sky? If I were an angel talking to the disciples, I might have added this, heaven is around you and above you. Enjoy the heaven God prepared for you here and in the heavens above. Eternal life starts here. We may need to review chapter 16 of John to get a better sense of what is taking place in John chapter 17. John 17 could be described as the Lord's Prayer. In fact, you might see that title in some Bibles. Jesus prays for his followers. Theologian Merrill Unger divides this prayer into seven requests. One that Jesus is glorified, united with the Creator, for the safety of Jesus' followers, for sanctification and unification of believers, for the world to believe, for believers to be unified with Jesus in the heavenly. In the Lord's Prayer, we get the sense that God the Son wants us to be one with God and with each other. Jesus' prayer is not just for the disciples that lived then. It is for everyone who has lived since this prayer was uttered. There are two different understandings of what eternal life means. The one that we're probably most used to thinking of is life that goes on through the eternities that never, ever ends. And the second one is the one that's here. And it's the meaning we don't talk about all that much. But this second source, second sense, sorry, of what eternal life is, is not about the length of life, but the quality of life. Contributors to the Life with God Bible indicate that this is the only biblical definition of eternal life. Both the understandings of eternal life start right here in the now, in the present. We can start living more like Christ right now. And because God is eternal life, and knowing that God is eternal life, that breaks the bonds of death and the grave, we know that we have this eternal life that lasts forever, that starts right now. Ki Young Mi Park wrote the commentary about the Gospel of John in the Global Bible Commentary. He observes that John did not give empty promises about the future, and he doesn't make hackneyed promises about the present. 
We don't see those in John's version of Jesus' prayer. Instead, John, instead John encourages those who are suffering to find the eternal life of God amidst the changing time that swallows everything. To the gospel writer, our present suffering, like the cross, is a blessing that is lifted up to God. Popular Bible commentator William Barclay states, Jesus had two major things he believed, one belief in God and two belief in humanity. Barclay indicates that one of the most uplifting things in the world is to think that Jesus put his trust in people just like ourselves. I'm going to zoom in on this for a moment. A person I knew used to say how much she hated going to a certain mall. For years, this mall had glass all over the walls of the inside of the mall. She said, everywhere I look, I see this stooped old lady looking back at me. Now, your mirror may be kinder than my mirror. My mirror could be charged with felony ugly and felony frightening. That pre-coffee, pre-comb look in the mirror just isn't a good look. Just saying, you know. Jesus trusts the person you see in the mirror every day. Jesus trusts the love that Jesus expressed in his life, in his ministry, in his passion on Good Friday, in his ministry on Holy Saturday, and his conquering death in the tomb on Easter Sunday. That is Christ's love that Christ touches us with and that Christ trusts us with. RVG Tasker is the author of the Tyndale New Testament commentary on John. He makes an interesting observation. Tasker notes that Jesus does not pray that his followers will be immune from hate. Jesus prays that his disciples will be able to fulfill their godly vocation of proclaiming God's love and reconciliation. Skip Herzig is the pastor of Calvary Chapel in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Herzig indicates that God saves us from the mess we are in, cleans us up, and sends us back into that mess with a message. And our job is to get rid of that mess. As we work to show God's love, the prayers of Jesus go with us. And this love is something that we use to help make the world a most, more just place. Jesus prayed for you in the Lord's Prayer and is praying for you now. We call that interceding, and Jesus is ever interceding for you. Jesus Christ interceding prevents us from being cut off from God. Our sins, our spiritual physical weaknesses, our diseases, none of these things separate us from God. Albert Moeller is a pastor of Third Avenue Baptist Church. He shared that his mother had Alzheimer's disease. He said, we lost her inch by inch. Later in his sermon, he says, not even Alzheimer's disease can sever me from God. Lady Gaga and Liza Minnelli presented the Oscar award for the best picture in 2022. I do not follow the Oscars. I only know that because someone recently played a video clip of the presentation to me. I gather there may have been some controversy about why Liza Minnelli was in a wheelchair. I'm not going to get into the controversy. In the video clip, we see Liza Minnelli appearing to be a little unsettled and uncertain about what to do. The subtitles on a video in the Icons Plus Facebook account says that there were nervous glances around the audience. At one spot, Liza seems to be reviewing the cards that she has in her hands, and she says, Oh yes, but what do I have to do? I don't understand. Lady Gaga kept her hand on Liza Minnelli, possibly to give Liza Minnelli the assurance of her support. Lady Gaga whispered, Liza, I got you. And Liza Minnelli replies, I know. Thank you. Listen carefully. From the heavenly, you can hear God whisper, and the whisper is coming down through the centuries. 
I got you. I got you.